everyone, welcome back. I'm Di, and today I am bringing you my thoughts on the series Grand Guignol Orchestra. This one is by Kaori Yuki and is published by Viz Media. This series is rated older teen and it takes place in a world where there are people who have been infected by a virus that turns them into guignols or doll like zombies. The series follows a team of musicians who travel the land, calming the guignols with their music. This was my first series by Kaori Yuki, and it was definitely an interesting one. Her art style is something that would have caught my eye had my daughter not introduced me to this mangaka. My daughter had actually read a couple of her other series previous to this one, and she had told me that she really enjoyed it, so I decided to go ahead and check this particular one out. Um, for the spooky season. We do own the first three volumes of this series, but I borrowed the last two from my library. After this read, I will definitely be collecting the other two volumes to have this whole series in my collection. While this series was enjoyable, though, it's de it definitely left me pondering for a bit. I was uh, slightly confused with certain things that had happened, and I feel like I might get a better grip on the story and some of the things that I was confused by. If I reread the series again, I probably won't be rereading it immediately, but I will definitely be rereading it again in the future. There are just some series that I feel when you read them require a lot of focus and concentration maybe some thought and going into this series is not something that I had anticipated so I had approached it like any other manga that I had read for entertainment only and that's not the way I should have approached this series in hindsight. I feel like this series definitely requires more concentration, more focus, a little bit more thought um, while you read it to understand what's going on and I also feel like maybe I wasn't in the right headspace um, to read this series to be able to allow it the kind of focus that I think it required. I do also wish that this series was given a few more chapters. I feel like the story would have been so much better if it had a little bit of extra room to explain things in the side panels where the mangaka like talks about what's going on in her writing journey for this series or what she's doing she does mention that there are times in the story where she had thought the story would go a different way but due to page constraints. She wasn't able to make it the way that she wanted. And I definitely feel like having those types of restraints did this series a disservice. We do get a little bit of backstory from everyone who is in the orchestra, which I thought was really interesting. But I really wish that we had more information on One of the more main characters, whose name is Lucille, he is a Philomena, or a songbird. He's the singer of the Grand Orchestra. He definitely has more of a feminine appearance, and that has to do with some procedures that were done on him when he was younger to give him this like songbird-like quality. This was something that I was very confused about while I was reading it, and I wish we had more information about it. There are certain qualities that Lucille has that are also very interesting, which have to do with his transformation into a Philomena, and he also has an androgynous look to him, even though we're told up front that he is a man. He has feminine features, the long hair, I'm sure you've seen him on the cover. There are times in the story where he gets mistaken for a female and he just goes along with it. 
So those types of things are very interesting to me, but I wish that we had gotten more on how he was turned into a Philomena, what types of things were done. There's some interesting information that we're given towards the end of this series regarding the Philomenas that I wish we were given more information on. We kind of get a vague explanation about it, but I think a more detailed explanation was needed, at least for me, regardless of the fact that I'm still feeling confused about certain things. This was an interesting read for me. I enjoyed reading it. I enjoyed seeing how the group got together and how they continue through these towns and perform their pieces of music and kind of help out each situation. There's a bit of a mystery element um, underlying throughout the whole thing regarding the Guignols along with the fact that the virus seems to be mutating and becoming stronger. But again, all of these little bits just make me wish that there was more to this story than there is. At the end of the fifth volume, there is a one-shot story called Camelot Garden, which is completely separate from the Grand Guignol Orchestra story. This one-shot was also very interesting. And the opening poem that she used for it, or I think it might have even been her inspiration for the story, was the poem The Lady of Shalott by Sir Alfred Lord Tennyson. She goes on to explain in the sidebar that she was introduced to it from the Anne of Green Gables miniseries. This is the Sullivan Entertainment version, which is one that I'm very fond of. For those of you who are familiar with it, the Lady of Shalott poem is recited by Anne as she is traveling down a river in a sinking boat and has to hold on to the underside of a bridge to be saved by Gilbert Blythe. Once I read the opening lines to that story, I had immediate nostalgic feelings about the series and it was a nice surprise to see that the miniseries that gave me those familiar feelings was the same thing that the mangaka was referring to. Camelot Garden also involves an androgynous character, so I'm not sure if that's a theme with this mangaka's stories, but I definitely enjoyed that short as well. All in all, I really enjoyed my experience with this mangaka's work. Now being that it was my first experience with it, I'm kind of wondering if the rest of her works need more focus more concentration, a little bit more thought, and I really want to be able to give them that when I go into it. So if you've read any of her other work or are familiar with it, please let me know if you think that her work does need more thought, more consideration, more concentration, because I really don't want to go into another one of her series not giving it the attention that it deserves. We do own quite a few of her other works. We own The Cane Saga, we own Most of Godchild, we own Fairy Cube, and the first, I think only the first volume of Angel Sanctuary. So like I said, if you've read any of her work, let me know if you think that it definitely needs more consideration, more concentration, more thought going into it because I really want to be able to give it that going into it instead of going in thinking that I could just read it for entertainment. I did definitely enjoy this experience with her work and am looking forward to more. If you have a favorite of this mangaka's work, please let me know what it is down in the comments below. I'm not sure which of her work I want to tackle next, so any guidance you can afford me would definitely be appreciated. That's all I've got for you today. I hope you're all doing great. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye.